A couple of weeks ago, I made a post in the community tab claiming that I've already selected the next three weeks worth of teardowns and that those engines have never been on the channel and they are often requested. Last week, we tore down a Ford 4.9 liter 300 straight six and this week, a Cadillac North Star. The L37 is a 4.6 liter V8 dual overhead cam, all aluminum, 300 horsepower. This is out of a 2002 Cadillac DTS with 155,000 miles on it. I know you guys like those details. And it's not that I haven't been able to buy a North Star for the last two years. This is the first one on the channel. It's that I don't, I don't really sell North Stars. I don't buy cars that North Stars come in. I might buy an XLR if I ever get the chance, but it's not something I chase. So the reason there's one here on the stand today is you guys. You guys wore me down. You beat me into submission, and I was at a place buying some other cores, and this was sitting there on the ground, and I thought, I'll do it for them. These engines had a pretty long production run. Came out for the 1993 model year, and the last year of production was 2011. Of course, they went through several different changes throughout the years, but for the most part, the overall engine design stayed the same. They were offered in three different V8 displacements, 4 liter, 4.4, and 4.6. There's also a supercharged version in the STS-V. Those are pretty cool. They also made a V6 version for the Oldsmobile Intrigue and the base model Aurora. It's a 3.5 liter. I can promise you I won't see one of those. I can't remember the last time I have. Regardless, these engines are well known, well known for one thing. Pulling the threads out of the block when they've been overheated. Now, I don't know what's wrong with this engine. It just says bad trans on the engine cover, but I know this engine was bought and returned and it likely wasn't installed. So let's dig into this and see if it's actually bad. The very first thing I noticed when I picked this engine up is this. This pulley is melted. The cam pulley that drives the water pump, it's like missing 80% of it. And the water pump, which is belt driven, is locked up solid. So I'm not gonna try to predict the future, but it might be overheated just a little bit. Well, the first thing I'd like to do is pull the plugs. Now these have ignition coils that are missing. So we just gotta pull the boots and that should be easy. Oh, water. To get to the rears, I need to remove, well, it looks like somebody already did. There's one connector here. Oh, I gotta get the engine cover. We'll just kind of, kind of just, will you, so this is how this is gonna start. Just one connector. Oh, that's all oil. 1040. Valvoline? <laughs> well, I think this these have been leaking for quite some time. Yeah, these are all soaked in oil. I'm gonna just drain this spark plug socket for a little while. It was very clear that the rear bank had never had a valve cover gasket, or if it has, it was a long time ago because they were just drenched in oil. But no bent straps, no smashed electrodes. All of the plugs are the same type. This is what I like to see. Another really common gripe about the North Star is its starter location. GM put the starter underneath the intake in the valley. Now, this engine still has an intake on it. And this is about that time in the video where I try to turn the engine over. And since the starter is still there, I guess what I'm trying to say is, yeah, we're, we're gonna do this. That, we're, we're gonna do this. Now, according to the wiring diagram, it's pretty easy to locate. There's the starter power wire. That's for the starter motor, but we need to find the starter solenoid, which I think there's a big gain connector right here. And that goes down to the starter for the solenoid. And I'm looking for a purple wire, which I think is this larger diameter wire here. Get out of here, stuff. It's just gotta be gentle, you know. 
There's a big purple wire somewhere. Oh, is that it? Well, the other wires look like they're probably knock sensor wires, so I bet if we pull this way out of this part of the harness, that, that's purple. That's our wire. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this wire through all of this tape, and we're going to affix it to this. So what I've gone ahead and done is found the two wires for the starter. I just uh, put them together. Got it grounded to a stud right there. It's probably not good enough, but we're going to try that anyway. And then these lead to power. All right, ready? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I have no idea what's going to happen here. So here goes something. That's it. I mean, it turns over. I expected it to do much more than that. Oh, it's much faster. Boy, that flywheel sounds terrible. Oh, it sprayed me in the face with something. Why did I look down the hole? For the sake of science, I'm actually going to jam the plugs back in it because I want to hear how this thing cranks with compression. Just so we know, I'm not going to do a compression test. That'll take way too long, and I don't want to get the end of my compression tester filled with oil. All right, now we'll see how it cranks with compression. See if it has a gallop or if it hits evenly. Not great. Doesn't sound good, and I'm not talking about the flywheel. The next matter of business is the intake manifold. Now, I thought that I might be able to pull this without pulling the fuel rails, but no, I have to pull the fuel rails. At least I have to pull the rear up so that I can get to all the manifold bolts. Let's see if we can lift this rail up. Yeah, now I can get to all the bolts. We're just gonna do this the right way. Oh, come on, dipstick already? Since this wire harness is already chopped, we're just going to cut the pigtails off. Fuel rails off. Now, all the manifold bolts. Blue. I guess the bell is when the round is over. The sheer amount of corrosion in here is pretty impressive. Everything's super brittle. There's like stuff growing in here. Science experiments. And this is what I'm talking about. It's like bubbling up. It's pretty gross. Let's look inside these intake ports. That looks okay. Also okay. There is some debris in there, but I bet that's from when I pulled that intake manifold off. This one looks all right. Yeah, I don't see anything too terrible yet. They're not terribly dirty either. Next, we'll get the front valve cover off. What? I gotta pull this tensioner? What? Who came up with this? We'll try something else here in a second. Get the rest of these bolts out. Yeah, so I guess I'm just gonna have to blast a bunch of bolts out of this to try to get this tension. I okay, we're just gonna try stuff. I might have jumped the gun on that valve cover. Let's just start zipping some bolts out. Hey, look, a parking off. 
I hope that wasn't good. That one looks good. Oh, the dipstick. I wasn't ready to do this, but I guess it's time to fight the dipstick, or at least bend it out of the way. Ah, we're just gonna... I'm gonna check the oil. Ah, let's try. Oh, I think it'll come out. Yes! I win again! Now we're gonna try to pull these out. Let's see how this works. Perfect! That wasn't too bad. Alright, now we can get that last bolt. I'm sure this will just. What in tarnation is going on here? Okay, force is not the answer. Do I have to pull this pulley off? That doesn't make any sense. I don't know if I can get that. Why would you have to do that to do the valve cover gasket? Why would you do that? Oh, I can see on the inside, but I can't get this off. I'm bringing bolts everywhere. I'm not having a good time. I know you guys are yelling at me now. That's not how this comes off. Well, you know what? You're right. It doesn't. It isn't. All right. Well, it looks like I need to pull the remains of this pulley off of here. It looks like I could use a, a special kind of puller, which I don't have. So I don't really have any aces up my sleeve, but I do have a hammer. And I don't know if that'll work or not. Would not work on your own car this way. Just want to put that out there. This is not GM's procedure. I still, oh, I see. I see. All right, let's get these seven millimeters out. Oop, that's tight. Don't want to do that. Nope. I still think that's not going to work. I, st I still think I'm screwed up here. I think I have to get this off. No. Why would you ever engineer this this way? Yeah, that's like a press fit. I'm gonna really have to look to see if I have the tool to pull this. Otherwise, we may have to do something kind of drastic. Okay, I give up. I'm gonna have to do this the right way. And thankfully, I didn't think we had one here, but we do have one here, shows what I know. A power steering pump pulley or alternator pulley removal tool, which I think will get this out. But one thing I did notice as I was looking at this, there's a broken off bolt inside of here, which means someone broke that either installing or trying to remove a pulley. So this has definitely been wrenched on before. I'm hoping we can get this out pretty easily. I, I, I mean, I'm always apprehensive. Anytime something's like this and someone else has been in here. So this kind of just sits in like this. The sleeve goes over this and then we're gonna tighten this up until there's tension. And then I just gotta crank that down and it should pull the remnants of that pulley off. Oh, that was the pop of happiness and not my back. Oh yes. Or more. Excellent. And we're off. Well, this doesn't look too terrible in here. I don't see any metal. I don't see anything too awful yet. Let's go pull the rear valve cover. This one should be a lot easier. Wow, that was a lot easier. This side's a little more dingy than the other side, but I still don't see anything awful. It actually looks a lot cleaner than a lot of the engines we've seen on the channel. While we're here, let's get this power steering pump out of the way. I think this is where I need blue. Mm. 
now I really need to remove this water manifold, which also has the throttle body plate on it, throttle body's mounted to it, the EGR valve. It's a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm just gonna start zipping bolts out, and eventually it should come off. Oh, we're leaking water. That's not coolant. Uh, maybe I should get a pan. Yeah, that's just water. That is not. Oh, I see more bolts. Is that it? I feel like there should be more. Uh, apparently not. Oh, this is gigantic. Nope, not gonna say it. Now, let's see if we can get this front exhaust manifold. This should do it. Well, that was simple. Now we're gonna try to get this, I don't know if I'd call it a crossover pipe out, but this exhaust pipe out. Oh, blue, I need you. That wasn't bad. All right, now the rear exhaust manifold. Next, we're gonna remove this tensioner and a pulley. Next, let's get this harmonic balancer out. I think that's keyed. I think I'm gonna have to use a puller. Wow, it has a lot of, that's a lot. Is that normal? There's no way that's normal. Am I working on a 4G63? All right, let's get the puller on it, get this off. This should work. Like butter. Now we'll get the timing cover removed. And there's the timing system. Well, for being 20 something years old, this is pretty good in here. I expected to see some chipping plastic, some loose guide, something, but this looks pretty solid. Are you dying on me, flashlight? While this may look pretty complicated with three timing chains, I feel like this is a pretty good design. It has a primary chain here. And I guess the reason they did that is to keep the chain length to a minimum and it also changes the speed. So this is a larger pulley here that's driven off the crank, and these are smaller that drive the cams. It's actually pretty, pretty, pretty simple. First, let's see if we can get this oil pump off. Yeah, that pump looks, looks pretty good. It's really simple. It's definitely worth saving. The next thing I'm going to do is remove these. These are like access plugs. And I would never use an impact on these because they're, I think they're plastic. So if they get stuck, you could just strip them out, you know. I don't think these would ever get stuck. So I'm backed away. Now we have three tensioners to unbolt and I will take no chances. Oh, that wasn't too bad. That one's still under tension. That's just, um... Oh, stuff's flying. That wasn't too bad. Better safe than sorry with safety tote. Next, I've got a whole bunch of 10 millimeter headed bolts to take out. 
That reel looks pretty good. Now, there's a few more tens behind those access plugs that I took out. Get those out of the way. Yeah, that reel, it looks like it's original. Is there a date code in it? Oh, two. That's an original reel and it's in great shape. You let go. There we go. Oh no. Coming out. O2, also in great shape. Now this bank looks like it's more stuck. I guess I should unbolt that, but yeah, let's do that. That did nothing. I got two guides. Well, that's still taut. There we are. Stuff is loose now. Is there a trick to this here? If I... I take it off of one of these and then I go like this and then bada bing. No! Ah, what a fight that rail was. But it is nice and it is original. And the last one. last rail and these for 155,000 miles they look fantastic oh that chain comes all the way out there's one and let's see yeah that's a nice chain this, this chain does not come out because of this cam sensor if I pull that out we'll be able to get the chain out and then this we'll just have to deal with Later, that's a later problem. Boop. Now it does look like I could remove the heads with the cams, but I want to look at the journals and I'm going to take it apart. That's what we do here. So now we can cram the cap caps loose. Oh, stubborn. Okay. Well, the journals in the head are not perfect. See, there's some scratches and grooves, but it's not really that bad, and I don't see any fine metal that would be normally hanging out where the oil comes through. And the rockers all look pretty good, too. Looks like there might be some moisture in here. The cam journals themselves, they're not that bad, but it does look like there's a little bit of rust or pitting on a couple of these lobes. Like there was a little bit of moisture inside the crankcase. Really isn't too bad. A few grooves and scratches, but it's it doesn't look like any kind of major debris ran through this engine. Now before we get the big head bolts out, there are three bolts at the front of each head. Oh, these aren't even torque to yield. That one is. Probably not. It just wasn't tight. Now it's time for the head bolts.
Now, the head should lift off. <laughs> ah, blue. The head gasket off. Oh boy, that is ugly. Look at all that. It's like, never seen one like that. Well, this is pretty ugly looking. There's definitely some rust or rust staining in here. I'll wipe these cylinders out in a second. But you can see there's tons of buildup in here. It's like all these crystals forming. That is not what you want to find in your cooling system. And the cylinder head gasket has just degraded. I mean, it's just, or is that stuff on top of it? That might be just stuff on top of it. No, that's, that's the gasket. That's uh, not good. It's not supposed to do that. It's like thick. It's rough looking. And the combustion chambers, they're wet likely from all the oil that was in the uh, spark plug wells when I pulled the plugs but they still look really dark and carboned up thank you head for dropping another rocker I'm gonna get these cleaned up tonight I think I think that's what we're gonna do and the head bolts don't really seem to have any threads on them which is good I mean, okay, the bolts are threaded. What I mean is it didn't look like it pulled threads out of the block. There is a lot of this, looks like sealant. I don't really know what else this would be. Some thread locker maybe? I don't know. Now it's time to crack the other cam caps loose. Yeah, it did it. Throwing stuff. The cam journals on this head appear to be in a little bit better shape, although the other head wasn't that bad. There's really no signs of wear whatsoever. And the camshafts definitely reflect that. These look really nice. It's just a real shame that someone broke off a bolt in the end of it. Cam caps look nice. The other cam looks good. Let's get those front head bolts here. I guess just the lower one isn't that tight. Now we'll break the other side head bolts loose. See if this one comes off or if I need any help. Yep, blue. Oh, that side's worse somehow. Well, the head gasket looks pretty terrible. Some of the uh, cooling passages are completely clogged, plugged up. And look at the buildup on there. And then the head. The head doesn't look as bad, but I mean, look at how much junk is in there. I don't see anything white like it was stained with coolant or running on coolant. Nothing super clean. 
and the sh the block. I mean, look at look at this. This is all plugged up. Like this is that's not metal there. That's wow. That's terrible. There. Do you want some? There. That's still good. Whatever that is. It's pretty awful. Now I'm going to spray down the bores. And uh, we're going to wipe them, clean them a little bit. See if we can gauge what their actual condition is. At first glance, the bores did not look too bad. But if you look further down the bore, You'll see there's some vertical scratching. And once we get the rods and pistons out, we'll get a better look. Right, same is true here. Much more wear there. On the other side as well. I'm going to show you the one on the other side. of the. This side has some really deep ones. I can definitely feel that with my fingernail. That would not clean up with a dingleberry hone. I bet that'll be the case in most of these cylinders. It's 1.30 in the morning, and I think I'm going to call it a night. Tomorrow, while I'm at work, I'm going to run those heads through the parts wash so we can see how clean they get. Maybe we can find some hairline cracks or some other issues with them. And then when I come in tomorrow night, we'll get this bottom end torn down. Now it's time to flip this thing over. I really am curious to see what this coolant looks like. Old Dex Cool. Yum. Oh, cool. It's got some solids in there. Oh, we still have oil in there. Let's get the other pan. Before we take the pan off, I'm going to remove the oil filter housing. Whoa, now. I don't see any metal in the oil. Wow, there is a lot of silicone between the bed plate and the block and the pan and the bed plate. All right, now let's zip all these tens out and pull the pan. Oh, can't start in the back. It's gotta start in the front. There we are. That wasn't too bad. Oh man, what the, this is what the pickup looked like when I removed the pan. This piece kind of fell off, but this is old RTV or excess RTV just hanging out in the pickup and there's more of it. You can see it's kind of in there. Let me get a pick and see how much more we can fish out. I'm sure there's not a lot in here, right? There actually is a lot in here. At first, I thought I was just joking, but there, there's actually a lot of RT. This is all RTV in here, I'm pretty sure. We're just gonna have to take that off and try to blow it out, clean it out, and we'll get a total quantity of excess RTV. Look at the amount of RTV here. Now, in their defense, it doesn't look like it's really been leaking. Okay, maybe a little bit. That is a ton. You think this has been a part before? I can't imagine GM doing this. All right, so here's the pickup. This is everything that I have picked out of it so far. And we're just gonna... Oh, we're not done. There's some more. That's a lot. It's a lot of RTV. Well, there's the results. All of that was either on or inside the pickup. Probably hard to get oil past all that. And looking at it here, you can see there's a lot of RTV kind of blocking that oil port there. This is too much, guys. 
there, it, there is a point of diminishing return when it comes to RTV usage, and I think this is well, well past it. Time to start zipping the short block apart. Nope, 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 nope. Well, that was interesting. As I was looking at the short block inside, something stuck out. Uh, a lot of, that's too much, way too much. Like, if there's a scale of one to 10, that's a Z. That's probably where all that RTV and the pickup came from. Someone's had this apart before. I can't, there's just no way GM, usually GM just doesn't use enough. This is too much. I like that on both sides. This is going to be a lot of fun to take apart. I think it's going to be easier to remove the lower block, the bed plate, than it will be to try to get all the rods and pistons out. Just because these two, I have to move it back and forth. I, it'll just be easier access. So I'm going to take all these 10 millimeter headed bolts out. We'll see how hard this is to come apart. Oh man, there's so much sealant. Battery's dying. Yep, crack them loose by hand. What's weird is that there are no bolts for this in this area of the block. None that I can see anyway. Maybe there's, oh wait, nope, there are none. So I must just use the clamping force of the main journals there. So much RTV, I don't know where to start. There's nothing to pry on. Let's try a bit, little bit bigger bar. What could go wrong here? Can I get it to move? No, not even. It's just laughing at me. What if I just... Whoa! Success! I think we can use blue for the rest of this. I did not expect that to work, but here we are. Oh, very good. The main bearings show plenty of wear. They're not worn through. But they're also not in, well that one kind of is. They're also not in great shape. But the main thing I want to talk about is RTV. It is really good at sealing things, so don't put it in places that you do not wish to seal. Because this person probably did. That's just so much, it's like $58 worth of RTV. It must have taken forever. Here's the other side. This side doesn't look as bad. But there is still a lot left. Let's start getting some rods and pistons out. Oh, nice and easy. Now for the next two. Last two. They practically fall out of the bores. Come back here. The rod bearings are really not so bad. They are worn, but they're worn pretty evenly. There's not a lot of damage, like there was dirty oil or something in the oil. 
I did look at them pretty closely. Since we think this engine's been apart before, I would assume there'd be like a date on here. And it's got a factory part number. And it says 055, or standard. That's not a five, I'm an idiot. Yeah, an 05. But some of these say 16. So I don't think that's a date code. I think those are the original rod bearings. The rods and pistons all look pretty decent. There's a little bit of skirt wear. I cleaned this piston off a little bit, but really not bad. I don't know that they're worth anything. This is how they looked when they came out. There's a lot of oil in there. Lots of carbon buildup on them, dirty oil. But no damage, really. Just a little bit of wear on the skirt. That one's got a little more skirt wear. It's not bad though. I know how you guys like comparisons and I don't do enough of them on the channel. But on your left, you have your standard Gen 4 full floater 5.3 rod and piston. It's a flat top, so it's a uh, non-variable valve timing. And on the right is one of the North Star rods and pistons. And there are some similarities, you know, they're, they're both round. They have the same number of rings. I'm, I'm kidding. But the overall piston design is pretty similar, but obviously there are differences. And, and plus, this is a 2002 North Star, and this is at least an, an 05 or 06 rod and piston. And you can definitely tell which rod is stronger. Before I yank the crank, I need to get this chain off of here. And I feel like this has to come off somehow. Oh, well. Well, that was significantly easier than I anticipated. I was going to have to get the bolt cutters out. Oh, wait a minute. We're still not any better than we were. Oh. Figuring stuff out. I think this piece is part of the crank. Nope. Excellent. That worked out really well. Now the crank should just right out of there. Well, the crank would probably need a, a polish before it gets reinstalled. The journals really aren't that bad. I obviously haven't measured them or anything. There's no major damage. They're just not perfect. The bores definitely have some damage. Vertical scratches. I can absolutely feel that with my fingernail through my glove. Pretty much both sides. That side's a little bit better. Pretty much the same story on the other bank. I wonder if they are known for this. This is the first one I've ever had torn down. I almost forgot. We need to pull this water pump apart. Oh, I'm, like, like that was just going to fall off. Oh. Well, I, I can't imagine why it doesn't turn. Well, that's uh, it's pretty rough in here. That is uh, much worse than I expected, but that's why it's locked up. That's why it shredded a belt. The one question I do have is, do you need to replace this entire housing if the water pump fails? Like, is this this entire assembly? Remove all of this stuff to replace the water pump? That seems like a lot. Well, the heads are out of the parts wash. And I combed them over as well as I could, and I didn't see any cracks or major damage. There's really not much to see here. They did clean up pretty nice, though. The other side came out really nice too. I don't know if they're flat. Probably need to ch check them with a straight edge, but that would be kind of hard to do with all the gasket material that's still on the surface. This engine was a mess. I bet it still ran, just not so well. 
I think whoever bought this engine got one look at the cooling system, found the locked up water pump, saw the melted pulleys, found the broken off bolt in the camshaft, and they likely wanted nothing to do with trying to make that repair. And I, I can't blame them. I actually think it worked out in their favor because this engine would not have lasted. It was in pretty poor condition. I'd say you could blame neglect and improper repair over engine design here. The cooling system was, was rough. I think it looked like it had old Dexcool mixed with some tap water. I'm assuming that because of the amount of rust on the water pump, that's what locked it up, and the thermostat area. Everything was corroded and plugged up, and then the valve cover gases were puking and had been for some time. And then the amount of RTV in this engine was crippling. I mean, it, I am so surprised that this engine had any kind of oil pressure, and I'm just assuming it had oil pressure because we didn't see signs of oil starvation. The bearings looked okay, and the, all the cam journals looked good. So I'm assuming it made some kind of oil pressure, at least enough to keep everything from coming apart. I don't really know the value of parts from these engines. This is the very first North Star I've ever torn down. It was actually pretty easy compared to some of the European stuff I'm used to working on. But again, it's a GM from the 90s design. That's usually pretty simple. I hope you enjoyed this teardown. If you'd like to buy any parts off of this engine or anything else I've torn down, or if you want to buy parts off of this 11 Jaguar XJL, it's a five liter supercharged, I'm going to leave our email in the video description. You can also go to importapart.com and peruse our inventory. I've been uploading our recent parts cars about every week so you can see what we've got in. And if you don't see what you're looking for, you can fill out our part request form which sends us an email of exactly what it is you're looking for. You guys wore me down, man. You got me to get a North Star. I'm not saying I'll never get another one, but I really hope you enjoyed this teardown. As always, I love all the comments all the feedback and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.